What's good, mind speakers, people of the planet and beyond, because you know, aliens and shit. Welcome back to my channel, or welcome to my channel if it happens to be your first time here. If you click this video, you know exactly what we're going over, because it's back to school season, which means a bunch of kids that were born in, like, 99, holy shit, are going to college. And I'm sad to say it, but this is just the way it goes. Most of you guys are not gonna survive it. And I have six rules prepared for you guys to follow so that way you won't end up back in between working at the grocery store and in your mama's crib while the rest of your friends are turning up at school next semester. If you wanna be there, these are the rules you gotta follow. But before we get into these rules, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel and become one of the mind speakers because I mean, who else will be giving you secrets like this to get through your first year of college? I mean, come on. Anyway, once you've done that, let's get into this video, let's go. Rule number six, straight up, sorry, there's no way around it, go to class. Heard it, go to class. For the people in the back, take your ass to class. Here's the thing, right? There's no substitute for going to class. And it's not that the professor may be saying anything that you can't get from your books or maybe even the PowerPoints that are uploaded online. And you're gonna feel like, why well, I gotta get up at 8 a.m. for him to go over exactly what he's gonna email to us after the class anyway. Listen, you have not finessed the system like sophomores, juniors, and seniors have. You don't know yet what you can get away with, how much you can get away with, having that relationship with professors and if you're in a freshman class attendance will be the first thing they use against you when they're ready to bounce you up out of here for a low GPA and when you're in the professor's office at the end of the semester begging for a D minus so that way the F doesn't tank your GPA he's gonna use that against you like well you didn't even come to class so why should I even pass you when you didn't even make an effort to come to class and I know it's easy to fall into the routine like oh it's 8 a.m. I'm just tired I'm just gonna miss this class I, but like I can I can keep up like I have it under control you have zero concept of control until you're out of control and once you're out of control you're fucked so to stop yourself just from being fucked just go to class pay your dues and the next semester you get to set your schedule more comfortably and realistically even when all your classes are starting at two o'clock you're still not gonna want to go so i mean 8 a.m 2 p.m time doesn't matter just take your ass to class my number five rule, get a good advisor. All advisors are not created equal, and I know they're gonna tell you that, but they're liars. This is definitely when you should be tuning into like the upperclassmen in your department and listening to them and talking to them about which advisor you should have for which sect of whatever you wanna go into, because each advisor is going to have a specialty, but you don't always get paired with the right advisor for you. And some advisors are just dickheads, no matter what their qualifications are. My first advisor was a doctor. He was well-respected in his field and, you know, breeded amphibians from like, you know DNA and shit like he was a genius but he was a trash advisor so I would set appointments with him all the time and say hey you know I want to meet with you at 2 30 he said fine I get there at 2 25 and he just wouldn't be there 2 25 2 30 3 o'clock he would never be there and I was getting a hold of him because I wanted to have a conversation about the classes I needed to be taking and you know scheduling because your advisor is supposed to be on your side if you can't get into a class your advisor should be the guy that could just send an email and put you in a class you know what I'm saying but my advisor just wouldn't do it and then when I finally got a hold of him and I was trying to tell him that I want to stay on track, he told me this verbatim. I mean, to be honest, it really doesn't even matter what you do because it took me six years to finish undergrad. So whatever it's gonna take you, it's just gonna take you, man. Just go with the flow. Nigga, it took you six years to get through undergrad. Nigga, it took you. That's not my objective. I'm trying to do this in four, four or less. Like, what are you talking about? Like, just make sure you get a good advisor. And if your advisor is ass, make sure you get rid of them stat. My number four rule, beware of upperclassmen. For academic advice, sure, reach out to your upperclassmen and get to know them. I'm talking about socially, right? Because upperclassmen, they just know the game better than you. And most of the time when the entire campus gets sick of, you know, each other, they're waiting to see what the new meet is on campus in the first place. So they're waiting to see like what the transfers look like, what the freshmen look like, and they're scouring the playing field and you don't even realize that you're being hawked on. All of you are being hawked on. Like, it's just, you, you probably just want to be aware of upperclassmen for that reason. And also, never let an upperclassman involve you in upperclassman drama. Because when you was in kindergarten with your Game Boy Advance and your link cables and uh, in homeroom, they were already here. So there's like three years, two years, four years of history behind them, drama behind them, beef behind them that you don't even know about. So why would you even want to infiltrate a social circle with all that shit in it? It's like, it has nothing to do with you. And they'll be the first ones to bring you in it. So like, just don't allow them to do that. And I'm not saying you can't have fun with upperclassmen, party with upperclassmen, just be smart around them because they think they're smarter than you. I'm just gonna tell you straight up, they do. So you just gotta let an upperclassman know like, yeah, you're grown, but I'm grown too, what's up? You can't play me. And then once they realize they can't play you, they start to treat you like a normal person or they just don't bang with you at all. But either way, you're not the fool, right? My number three rule, be responsible for yourself when you go out. And this especially in these first couple weeks, I know we're within the first weeks, but you may think you know who you're going out with. I'm gonna tell you something straight up. 
you don't know these people. Like, you may think you know them. No, 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 no. You don't know them. You don't know none of that shit. They probably don't have any type of loyalty to you. Like, if you went missing, or they would just probably just be like, oh, I knew a girl that went missing for three days, and the rest of the girls were kind of like, yeah, we don't know where she went. Like, what do you mean you don't know where she went? Like, wasn't that your friend? No, because y'all not friends. Y'all just went out together. So please be responsible for yourself when you go out. And that also means be weary of how much you're drinking, if you're drinking, and what you're drinking. I know you're going to want to go to the parties where the free liquor's at and drink the punch. Don't drink the punch. Another rule. Don't drink the punch. Please don't drink the punch. Like, I know liquor's expensive and this punch is free, but you know what's not free? Your dignity. Your self-respect. Like, every bad story that I could tell you in my college experience happens to do with when someone drank the punch, when I drank the punch, like people get drugged all the time I've, I've heard of people throwing Benadryl in punch people throwing a bunch of shit in punch girls only punch for girls only to get roofied like it's a whole problem don't drink the punch and when you think you know someone and you go out with them and all of a sudden you see out the corner of your eye that she's cutting coke with her student ID on the kitchen counter look at her wave and just tell her I'm going home just don't do it trust me like take care of yourself it is your responsibility to get back in your own goddamn bed and to call your mother in the morning and let her know you're alive that's your only responsibility so prioritize that responsibility because no one else is gonna take care of that shit besides you. Number two, speak your mind with your roommate. I know what it's like to be 18, 19. I know what it's like to think, you know, we have to be friends. And when you're friends, that means you don't have boundaries. You just let shit slide. You don't bring shit up when it bothers you. At th pop, boom, no, none of that. Dead it right now. You and your roommate can be friends and still have conversations and still let him know when stuff isn't cool. Still let him or her know like, hey, I'm trying to study, like cut down the music or can you go talk to your bae in like the lounge or something? Like you have a right to be in your space and to demand and ask for what you want in your space at that given time. You don't just have to accept bullshit because when you accept a bunch of bullshit and when you take too much on, which was a lot of my problem my freshman year with my freshman year roommate, you take all that on and then it just builds resentment for no reason. When the two of you shouldn't even have beef, like you just share a Room. There's an old black saying that says, if you don't have peace in your house, you don't have peace nowhere. And that is the truest thing I can ever speak to no matter where you live. If you do not have peace in your home, you don't have peace anywhere. So you need to make sure that your room is a place where you come home and you feel like I can study here if I choose to. Some people can't study in their room. Some people prefer to go to the library. I don't want to go to the library. I'm not good at studying in my room. I'm not good at studying at all. But if I were to study, I'd want to do it in my room. I don't want to go in the library. Why for me to just be on YouTube in the library? Like, no. But it's also hard to do that with a bunch of distractions around your roommate playing Call of Duty or talking to her boyfriend or I don't know uh, reggae blasting in the background or sex like there's so many other things that could be going on that could just kill the vibe of you trying to get what you need out of being in your room so you have to speak up to get those things because if you don't speak up to get those things it's gonna fuck up your whole college vibe like have peace in your room and we've made it to the number one rule and the number one rule is of course be yourself. And I know that's so like anticlimactic and so like textbook this channel, but let me tell you some shit, right? I always felt like in my four years of college, you could never make friends with freshmen for the first couple months because freshmen always have this personality of who they want to come off as. You know, like it may be separate from their high school personality. They want to leave whatever that was behind. They want to start anew or they're acting a certain way and they think they can pull that off. It's not going to work, babe. Like, <laughs> baby, it's not going to work. You live here, you eat here, you sleep here. Here, you nap here, you cry here, you party here, you do everything here. So this becomes home. So eventually you're gonna act on this whole campus the way you would when you're in your own room. And that honestly is who you are. And so who you are is gonna come out anyway. So you might as well just be who you are so that way you can be comfortable, find people who like you for who you really are. You know what I mean? Because there's so many people, September, October, they'll be friends. And then all of a sudden, when they really become who they are, they really don't even like each other. Like, don't waste your time having the freshmen like, oh, I'm gonna be this way because I was this way in high school. Like, it's dumb. It's really dumb for you to try to be somebody else just be yourself and make real friends and when I tell you when you do that it'll be the most rewarding thing you do in all of your four years anyway that's it for this video I hope you guys enjoyed these six rules that I was able to come up with for you to survive your freshman year of college if you obey these rules enough trust me you'll be able to skate through and even if you make it by on academic probation bitch you you gonna make it though that's what matters you gonna make it you will be a sophomore next year if you follow those rules and you won't disappoint your parents I mean not too much at least but more importantly, you won't disappoint yourself. So I think the whole basis of this is the number one rule you need to know when going into college is you know nothing. I know you think 18 years old means a lot, but let me tell you something. You don't know a goddamn thing. You know nothing. So once you know you know nothing, you're able to learn something. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. If not, suck a dick, and I'll be seeing you guys later. Deuce.
she was like, who knew me before this album? And I was like, me, me, like that, like I do. And then she performed Child's Play and Hijack and I was mad like loud and abrasive at other people like, sometimes I keep you in my mind. You know, other people like, you don't know this song, fuck out of here. Like all you know is Supermodel, like 